So good morning and welcome to the IAPA Skills and Salary Survey webinar. The Skills and Salary Survey has been undertaken by IAPA for the last three years. And what we're trying to do is both create a benchmark but also see if there are trends uh, that are happening in the analytics community. Um, we look at salaries, which is why it's called the Salary Survey, um, and how those salaries are fluctuating um, over the course of three years. We also look at the skills and whether there is a change in the skills within the analytics community and where, where we have an abundance of skills and where we also have skills that are more rare. We also look at the extent to which analytics is relied upon by businesses and whether there remains challenges within uh, organizations of actually both gaining insights from, from, from data but then making sure that those insights are actioned upon by the business and we track that again year on year. And also, uh, this year, we had a special focus looking at the issues of disruption and innovation within analytics and within organizations. So today, we will go run through the results of the survey. Um, and please do, as I said, if you've got questions, please make sure that you type them in, and we'll try and get to those before the end of the session. Now, to take us through the uh, results of the, uh, of the piece of research, I have two um, experts joining us on the panel today. I have Evan Stubbs, who is the author um, of the um, Skills and Salary Survey and is also an IAPA board member. Um, Evan is the Chief Analytics Officer for SAS and well-versed in this subject matter. I also have joining us today Anthony Ugoni, who is the chairman of IAPA, and he is also the chief analytics officer for SEEK, and as well, very well versed in, in the subject of analytics. So I'm first of all going to pass over to Evan, who is going to take us through the first part of the findings of the IAPA Skills and Salary Survey. Over to you, Evan. Thanks, Jody. So um, as uh, Jody mentioned, this is the third year we've now run the Skills and Salary Survey. Um, it is an important benchmark in the analytics landscape. It is the single largest source of information in Australia about um, the going rate for analysts, data scientists, BI professionals. It represents a very valuable resource uh, to people uh, interested in furthering their careers, interested in understanding how learning new skills or technologies or capabilities might improve the prospects, as well as um, good insight for organizations, corporations, and uh, public sector organizations to understand where the trends are, what's in demand, um, and how things are shifting uh, from year to year. It does add um, a great deal of uh, credibility, I believe, to our profession by showing the breadth of skills uh, that an analyst has uh, working in the industry today. As with uh, every year, we pick each year we pick a particular focus area to kind of explore in a little bit more detail. Uh, these They do change from year to year. This year, we decided uh, to focus in on dif disruption and the degree to which analytics is contributing to competitive differentiation. The intent behind that really is to kind uh, try and get an understanding of how um, there's, there's a lot of conversation about uh, industry being disrupted. What we're interested in doing is asking our members uh, their perspectives on how much they actually see it happening uh, in the market on a day-to-day -day basis and how much their, they believe their skills actually contribute to their organization's competitive differentiation. So um, disruption, um, somewhat unsurprisingly, is having a major impact on business uh, across Australia. So we asked the question this year, how much do you feel your uh, business is being uh, disrupted through um, external factors? And approximately 54% of respondents this year said that their industry is being quite or substantially disrupted. And this was pretty consistent across a variety of industries. So Anthony will take us through um, our respondent profile shortly. But these responses were pretty consistent across most of the industry sectors that respondents came from. 81% uh, additionally, and this really does highlight the importance of analytics in contributing to competitive differentiation, 81% of respondents said that their organizations were using analytics to contribute to their innovation and differentiation. So a substantial majority of our respondents felt that their skills and the analytics that they were applying were contributing to their organization's competitive differentiation in a pretty measurable way. The response rates uh, for this year's survey were fairly consistent to the last two years in terms of both the distribution and the volume of responses. Uh, total responses were slightly up um, relatively uh, compared to last year. We received 609 responses in total uh, this year. So again, it makes it what the largest survey of its kind in Australia. 
and um, arguably one of the largest in terms of sheer response rates globally, um, focusing specifically on Australia. Um, of those 609 responses, 449 were valid. Um, approximately 30% of responses were from supply side organizations. So as, in, as with previous years, there is quite a difference in trends in demand for skills and application of skills and in salaries between uh, the industry side of the market. So the organizations which are uh, such as you know, operating in telecommunications, financial services, insurance, versus the supply side. Uh, so um, IT companies, uh, consultancies, and organizations which really provide uh, services or services software, technology, or hardware to organizations in the market. Um, so again, pretty fairly consistent with previous years, 30% uh, uh, coming from supply and approximately 70% coming from industry. The bulk of responses this year, again, coming from New South Wales and Victoria, which represents distribution of industry, but um, quite interesting, you know, um, quite a good response rate from Queensland and uh, Western Australia and South Australia as well. Um, I might ask uh, Anthony to kind of step us through some of the obs observations we saw this year in terms of salaries. Thanks, Evan. The, um, the median salary for our respondents this year is, is up again from last year's survey. 4% uh, from last year at $130,000. This actually represents an almost doubling of the, uh, the median Australian full-time salary. It's important to note that salary growth has also continued to grow even with a continuing influx of graduate and junior roles uh, being filled. This also represents an increase of 18% over the three years that IARPA have been publishing this report. This is in stark contrast to the average industry annual wage growth of 2.3% as reported by the, the ABS. Uh, as in previous years, finance, insurance and information technology have driven these numbers as they continue to be high payers, uh, but also contribute significantly to the pool of respondents. But it should also be noted that the utility sector contributing only 5% of this respondent pool, pay employees at comparable rates to the larger sectors. We have uh, seen a decline in the median salary for employees in professional consulting roles. Uh, in total, with the previous, the insight from the previous slide, this suggests that the industry trend is moving towards more internalising of analytic resources uh, and less outsourcing that we've previously seen. Uh, finally, on the salaries, we, uh, we've seen out of 8 out of 10 respondents indicate that they were satisfied, slightly or markedly happy with their salary position. So the uh, industry from a salary perspective seems to be a healthy place. Quickly back to Evan uh, to talk about skills. Oh, thanks, Anthony. So um, again, Something we introduced for the first time last year was um, applying some iterative clustering techniques. So for those who are interested, we actually used an iterative k-means clustering um, technique to work out um, were there any overarching patterns in the skills profiles of our respondents along with this, um, the t tools they use, the technologies and the skills they apply on a regular basis. So somewhat serendipitously, and this was not by design, it actually emerged from the data. So a good example of real data-driven insight. We really found uh, kind of four segments um, came out. So what we did was we took those same segments from last year and the same rules that we used to classify those segments and applied them across our respondents this year. Three of the segments we're, I'll focus on first. So three of the core segments, one was really focused around an, uh, BI and visualization capabilities. So very much uh, focused on using tools like Tableau. Uh, technical skills tended to be distributed most, across, most frequently across business intelligence, tended not to be heavily involved in applying predictive techniques. And um, they also tended to have the lowest incidence or lowest rate of use of direct programming languages. Uh, this is probably the largest growing segment. Um, last year, it, it um, uh, comprised probably about 35% or 35% of respondents fell into this segment. This year, that's actually up to 49%. And that seems to match a broad trend towards approachable analytics generally. So we'll talk a little bit more about the tools and um, how the patterns have changed. But there does seem to be quite a strong trend towards um, people being able to pick up highly approachable visualization tools and actually start generating insight from them. However, this does come uh, with a caveat. The, this 
particular segment was also the one that's seen the median supply, median salary drop the most relative to previous years. So that's probably reflective of decreasing barriers to entry for people interested in being able to get insight out of increasingly commoditized tools. The second group, um, which is actually down from previous years, are the traditional analysts. So 30, it was uh, about 30% of respondents last year fell into this group. It's down to about 23%, which suggests that some of the people who were doing this, um, who were applying these kind of skills have moved into other segments. However, um, this particular segment is in demand. Uh, their sal median salary for this group is actually up uh, relative to pre last year. Tools they most commonly use are tools like SAS Enterprise Miner, Enterprise Guide, SAS Visual Analytics, heavily focused in on the use of inferential statistics and uh, frequently apply predictive analytics. Their usage of R matches the average analyst, um, so there doesn't appear to be a particular bias towards open or closed source within this group. The other group that's down relative to last year are the analytical integrators. Now, these were an interesting group. They only comprised about 11% of responses uh, last year. They're actually down to about 6% this year. Typically didn't use a lot of tools, um, but very, very focused in terms of the skills they apply around operational analytics, data governance, systems integration. These people appear to be the people who kind of may, are the glue that make everything work together. They also tended to use SQL a lot more than average. Uh, median salary in this group, I think, was fairly constant year on year. Which takes us to our fourth segment, uh, the data scientists. Now, these, these people are the most interesting, I find. Um, it, the segment is slightly down from last year, so um, it's 22%. It was approximately 24% of responses last year fell into this group. But these people have the most diverse set of skills. Um, they tend to be more technical. They tend to be uh, use a very, very wide set of technologies. And they've also seen quite, um, you know, the median salary has grown um, from the prior year. There is an open question. I mean, these people uh, do appear to be um, very, very much in demand. Now, I'll hand it back over to, or am I continuing? Um, we're up to skills. I am continuing. So, tools. Um, the most frequently used tools are both Excel and Tableau. So pretty consistent year on year. Uh, that that uh, hasn't changed um, from last year. What has changed is the rate of increase or the the increase in the percentage of responses, respondents who said they have used these tools and specifically approachable visualization tools over the last three months. So both Tableau and SAS Visual Analytics have increased 50% year on year. So the number of, to be very clear, the number of respondents who have said that they have used these tools in the last three months have increased by 50% across both of those toolkits, which is an absolutely enormous, um, enormous increase. It does reflect a broad trend and a general trend towards um, approachable analytics and the use of um, very, you know, much, much more approachable, approachable tools. Certain tool sets, um, so uh, the results were largely consistent from the prior year. The other notable exception was that um, SAS, ClickView, and R Commander appear to be paying around about a 10%, or people who are using those tools appear to be attracting about a 10% premium in their median salaries compared to other groups. Um, if we continue on, the programming languages, um, again, fairly consistent. One of the big notable trends, though, or two notable trends, is the increased use of open source technology, specifically R and Python. Um, the number of respondents who have said they used R in the last three months, in the three months prior to filling out the survey, actually increased from 28% to 35%. And this is pretty consistent across um, uh, most open source languages. So specifically, it was most noticeable, noticeable in R and Python. Um, that was also, um, there was a corresponding drop in the number of respondents who said they used a commercial programming language, such as Visual Basic, SAS, and SPSS. However, um, that was also matched by an increase of 12% in the median salary of people who are using those languages. So there's some, appear to be some interesting trends. Um, one clear one is that um, the ongoing adoption of open source, but equally um, there is strong demand in term, um, from employers and they're willing to pay a premium for people who actually know how to program in the commercial languages like uh, Visual Basic, SAS, and SPSS. Um, moving on to uh, expertise, 
Uh, compared to 2014, one of the big trends is that analysts and analytics professionals are using a much broader range of tools. Um, that That's matching a general explosion in the number of toolkits and tools that are available for people to solve uh, complex problems with. One thing this does highlight is uh, for people who are interested in maximizing their value in the market, there is a very strong need to have a strong technical capability and a strong ability to work with multiple technologies, um, especially given, you know, given, given the sheer diversity of to tools. Um, one of the key uh, implications out of this too is that in, a, in an increasingly heterogeneous environment, analysts need to be able to adjust to the environment that's provided to them by their employer. Uh, so one of the key messages we give to our members is that you need to be able to adapt and you need to recognize that the toolkit, you know, the variety of tools is increasing. In terms of um, storage engines, flat files are the most commonly used um, as in previous years. So um, CSV files, Excel files, XML, and so on. SQL Server, again, pretty consistent, um, followed by SAS, Oracle, and so on. Um, and moving on to um, the technical and soft skills. So among um, the single biggest skill um, that was in consistently in demand were the um, were skills associated with staff management. And that's both across uh, industry and supply. So analytics and analyst, analytics professionals don't operate in a vacuum. Um, it is a team sport, and the people who can get the most out of their people appear to be in the highest demand. Uh, the median response to two very interesting trends, which are very different from last year. One is on the um, on the supply side, um, big data skills are attracting approximately 50% more than the, media, typical, than the median respondent salary. So for people who are in the consulting businesses, in um, IT vendors, or in IT suppliers, people who are actively applying big data skills were commanding a very, very large uh, median uh, premium increase over uh, the median respondent. Um, from memory, it was upwards of about 200,000 uh, median salary, which was compared to the median salary of about 130,000. It's quite a substantial difference. The interesting thing was this wasn't the same on the industry side. So in contrast, on the industry side, people who were actively applying cloud technology skills were actually getting the pre a, a pretty similar premium increase. That might be for a variety of reasons. It may be an interest in achieving vendor independence from storage engines. Um, so we specifically asked around people who are using um, online cloud-based storage technologies like Amazon Web Services, S3, Redshift, and so on. It was those people who were getting the biggest premium. So it could be a number of factors. It could be an interest in getting independence from storage vendors. It could be an ongoing migration to more flexible architectures. What it does highlight, though, is a very interesting trend that's very, very different to the last two years' surveys. And I might hand it um, back over to Anthony to talk about a little bit about uh, what we found on the education side. Thanks, Evan. Uh, so speaking, uh, following the skills and uh, expertise section, we're seeing genuine, genuine talent available uh, in this marketplace. Knowledge continues to grow, as Evan's already spoken about. Uh, oops, sorry about that. We've seen 51% uh, of respondents uh, telling us that they have a tertiary qualification uh, at honours level, masters or PhD. 51% uh, is still a fantastic number. However, it's down uh, from 60% in the previous year. Uh, most of the gain has been picked up by bachelor's level qualifications uh, as a maximum. Uh, and that speaks to a influx candidates who are coming into the market uh, have identified the, uh, the genuine career that exists in an analytics domain. Um, impressively though, we had 11% of respondents uh, forging careers in this highly technical domain with the high school or diploma qualifications only. Um, the respondents have uh, talked about uh, a number of areas that they can see for development. However, the top five we've called out here, uh, and they are a mix of capabilities. Whereas in the past, uh, analytics professionals would have spoken mostly about technical skills that they need to gain. Um, we can see the emerging technical skills, such as big data analytics, 
uh, cloud management and utilisation up there in the top five skills that uh, respondents need. And the main specific needs in marketing analytics is still called out by our group. However, the business management skills, such as management of teams uh, and value engineering and business case development, uh, included in those top five, five skills. So the industry is identifying their need to be more involved on the business side of analytics than the technical side of analytics in order to create, generate, uh, and realise value within the analytics. Um, interestingly, the, the marketplace is responding strongly to these demands. We have uh, just in recent times business analytic degrees emerging out of Melbourne Business School, the Trove University, the University of South Australia and Deakin University uh, all in the last couple of years. What is most noteworthy about these examples, however, is the fact that these degrees are being offered out of business schools or IT faculties and not where you may expect them uh, to be coming out of the traditional mathematical and statistical science. Um, we're on to challenges. Um, that's still me. So almost half of our respondents cited executive level understanding of data and analytics as a challenge that uh, hinders insight into business action. Coupled with uh, the need to convince the organisation of the value of analytics um, and getting the organisation to actually act upon the insight within the top five challenges faced by our analytic groups, that speaks to the need for both the analytic community to develop influencing skills uh, but also a requirement uh, on the other side of the equation for coaching, mentoring and even training at executive levels. The, uh, the rapid wave um, of new technologies and methodologies uh, is driving the challenge of developing new skills for analytic professionals uh, and the long-standing issue which still hasn't been solved uh, right across the industry is the timely access to quality data moving at the top of the challenge. We are still with me for the key findings then. So what we'd call out is there still seems to be a tremendous upside in leveraging analytics in business. Um, just spoken about the need to convince executive and the business in general about value that analytics groups are creating. Um, there is still tremendous value to be had. Um, as Evan spoke about before, there is significant growth in the field of approachable analytics. Uh, it's the largest growing segment that we've seen in the survey uh, and the upswing of tools such as Tableau and SAS Visual and Analytics uh, points to the fact that there's enormous growth and organisations are starting to see the need to be able to present analytic findings in a more consumable manner for the business. Uh, we talk about cloud and big data uh, continue to emerge and those, uh, as Evan said, are certainly not coming cheap. However, their ability to enable business with analytic output um, is starting to really take, it's starting to really show its capability. Uh, open source adoption uh, is slowly becoming mainstream and I think by next year we would even say uh, it's no longer emerging. It, uh, it, seems to be trending to the point where we need to consider it to be the norm. And then finally, um, while there is upside uh, and organisations are putting effort into consuming their insight from a business perspective, uh, there is still some friction that exists when taking insight into actionable business activities. And so with that, I'll pass to Jody for uh, where to next. Thank you very much, Evan and Anthony. Thank you so much for taking us through those results. Um, I think uh, you'll all agree there are some really interesting findings in there. Um, I'd encourage anyone now, if you've got questions, now's the time to type them in and I will make sure that we um, answer those questions uh, before the end of the session.
But just as a roundup of, of what we've seen probably over the last year in terms of skills and salary um, in the analytics profession, I think we can safely say there is still a tight labour market. So we still have a skill shortage um, in our market and are still wanting to attract new people into the analytics community. Um, I think the other thing that we can see is that there are certain skills um, that really are um, in, in high demand and as analytics professionals I think it's incumbent on all of us uh, to make sure that we're upskilling into those areas to make sure that we can meet the demand of the industry. Um, from um, an analytics professional's point of view, so as, as analytics professionals, what do we need to be doing? And I think it goes back to the point that was made about influencing skills. It's a shame that we see that businesses are not, um, in, in some instances, acting on the insights that are derived from analytics. And so it's really for analytics professionals to take on that influencing role and drive the value of analytics within their organizations. Business leaders, so on the other side of the equation, business leaders now need to fast track their knowledge of data and, and, and analytics to combat business disruption. So this, this slight lack of um, knowledge um, on the business side is actually holding up growth um, in analytics and holding up organizations from being able to truly deliver on the insights um, that are derived from, from analytics. And that is something that really needs to change, particularly as um, it's those organizations who adopt analytics that have the competitive advantage. So that's a very important point. Um, and businesses also need to understand that um, how they go about creating a data-led organization and the capabilities required. I think we all realize that you can't have all of the capabilities in one person, uh, but how do you create a team that has the full skill set that can truly deliver results for the organization? Um, and I'm going to ask a couple of questions on that in a, in a second, so I'm just letting Evan and Anthony know as a couple of questions coming your way. Um, as IAPA, um, we support the an, um, analytics professionals in Australia um, and continue to try and make sure that we are providing value back to the industry so that we can all be better at what we do. Um, and one of the things that we will be doing early next year, very early next year, is launching education programs around some of these things that we've been talking about today so that we can upskill um, up the industry. Uh, and make sure, as I said before, that we have the supply to meet the ever-increasing uh, demand. So over to a couple of questions, and I'm going to, to start with Evan. Um, in terms of the, the skills required, um, there were some that were really stand out there. What would you be advising analytics professionals to be focusing on um, in the year ahead in terms of the skills that they should be looking to to make sure that they have? No, that, that's a good question. I mean, some of the things haven't changed. I mean, uh, having uh, communication skills and uh, you know understanding of how the work that you're doing is actually either making a difference, adding to the bottom line, or improving the business generally. Those are still tremendously valuable skills um, and if they they represent um, one of the big differences between I think a, a, a statistician or a general analyst to someone who actually is both commanding a higher salary and having more influence and um, uh, I guess ability to get things done. Beyond that though um, the big trends um, that I think I personally pulled out of the survey one is um, approachable analytics tools and combined with an influx of graduates means that people who are pure specialists in visualization and using um, tools to generate uh, charts and business intelligence are likely to see ongoing downwards pressure in the median salary largely because the tools are becoming easier to use they're becoming more approachable they're becoming more accessible and there's a lot more people entering into the market from bachelor's and undergraduate um, degrees on the other side, um, the people who are really in demand are the ones who are seem to be pushing the boundaries on knowing how to get the most out of cloud capabilities, knowing how to you uh, bring together a really diverse set of tools to be able to drive an outcome and a really comfortable moving um, outside of, I guess, their traditional domain and starting to deal with emerging technologies and emerging challenges. 
So if I, if, I, if I summarize all that up, the two biggest skills I'd say you couldn't go wrong focusing on, one, the business and communication capability. Um, if you can't explain what you're doing, then um, it's very hard to explain why you are of value. And two, um, being willing to, um, I guess, use the emerging technologies and deal with the complexity that we're ending up both on the big data side as well as on the techno technology front. Great, thank you very much. Um, Anthony, um, do you have, I mean, one of the, the key challenges seems to continue to be um, to get businesses to actually act on uh, the insights that are derived from, from analytics. Uh, and I'm sure that's something perhaps you've seen in, whether it's in your business or other businesses. Do you have any advice um, for, for, for people who are in these roles, who have, who do feel that they've kind of got something to add to the business but are not actually seeing their work make their way to the right hands and have the right, um, outcome from it. Do you have any advice for people as to how they can be more influential within their organizations? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, where we see some of the best analytic outcomes is where the analytics group or the analytics individual has actually spent the time to work with the business and understand the business needs, understand the business standpoint, and understand the business strategy uh, as opposed to uh, traditional analysts where CRM and analytics has failed, where they've come in saying, I've got a great tool and uh, now I'm going to spend a large amount of time trying to find a problem that I've applied to without necessarily solving for the business's biggest needs at that time. So the two things are focusing on understanding what the business strategy is, applying discipline, solving that. And I, I take great heart from seeing uh, this approachable analytics uh, cohort coming through. Um, it, uh, it speaks to the it speaks to the analytics industry understanding is more to great analytics than simply um, coding up the most sophisticated model, for example. Uh, being able to present it back to the business is important, uh, and the business's support of those functions suggests that the business knows there's value to be had and they're putting effort into bridging that gap between the hardcore analytics um, that is, and we've used the word a few times now, consumable, that is not necessarily consumable by the plain English business users. Um, being able to wrap that up in a package that the business can understand um, in, uh, in reference to what the business um, needs are and the business... Sorry, guys. Can you still hear me? Yeah, hear you. Can you hear me? Sorry, <laughs> I touched the screen. I logged out there. Um, so wrapping that, uh, wrapping up the analytics into um, you know the words and the needs of the business uh, and the strategy of the business. Um, that answer the question. Yeah, there, perfect. Thank you. Um, a question has come through, and I hope this means something to one or other of you. Um, is there any view if benefit realization plans help present the value of analytics? Evan. So I, if, I, if I'm understanding the question correctly, we, we unfortunately didn't go down to the level of working out how people are uh, explaining the value of um, the, both the work that they do as well as the outputs they create. What we did see was that it is a um, very frequently applied skill set and equally it's also one where our respondents felt that they need, uh, could do with additional, um, I guess, help or training or assistance in working out how best to communicate the value. Um, so again, well, we, we, we kind of wrapped it up into value engineering and business case development. It was flagged as a very, very significant area of interest for skills development over the next year by, a, a, I think, not, uh, I think it was one of the highest ranked areas. Um, so the, the short answer is we're not sure how people are communicating the value specifically, but it is clearly an area where there is demand for skills, people are applying the skills, and people want to learn more on how they could be doing it. Great. Um, Anthony, did you have anything to add to that? Just from personal experience, the, uh, the best uh, use cases of analytics in business that I've seen uh, have been where there has been a dedicated comms function, and that comms function doesn't necessarily come from an analytics discipline. It more so comes from the business discipline 
that is then embedded in an analytics environment, understanding what the analytics group can do, how they do it, the challenges they face, um, and then interpreting that into business speak and taking that back out to the business. So that constitutes um, benefit realisation plan. Then yes, absolutely. We'll need Okay, one last uh, question, and I'm going to ask both of you um, what you thought was the most surprising outcome of the, the research this year. So I'm just giving you a little heads up that that's coming, so you've got a second to think. Um, whilst um, we answer Barrett's question that's come through um, as to whether there is any um, uh, insight into uh, bonus structures and uh, that sort of thing. So did that come out in the, in the, in the salary survey? Yeah, so um, and it's a good it's a good question. So the the salaries that we've been talking about, and um, these this is explained in more detail in the report. Uh, so I would encourage everyone to download it uh, as soon as it goes live. But the salaries uh, that we talk we've been talking about are uh, inclusive of bonus and superannuation. So it is total total gross salary. Um, in terms of whether there's any insights on uh, bonus structures and trends, that's a great question. One of the challenges we had in pulling together the report was that, if anything, um, there was too much information uh, contained within the data. So uh, that's actually one of the areas that we're going to be exploring in more detail on the website um, over the next few months. So we'll be releasing a variety of, uh, I guess, write-ups and, um, I guess, more uh, focused point uh, analysis about specific topics. So please do, um, if there are any topics of interest, please do have a look at what we're writing and comment, and we can actually go in and do the analysis and uh, provide with a bit more detail about, if any, if, about anything people are particularly interested in. Perfect. Uh, so Anthony, over to you. What was your most surprising result uh, that you saw in the research this year that you didn't expect to see or that was a new trend um, that, that uh, has hit your radar? Yeah, so for me, the biggest surprising thing is the emergence of that um, FBI, that reporting group, the Tableau, the SASH visualisation users. Um, it's, uh, it's a fantastic outcome, I think. I've already said it. Uh, it is the recognition by both the analytic community and the business community to bridge the gap. It speaks to the business starting to understand better than had in the past that there is value to be had. Um, how, do we, how do we understand what that value is? How do we understand where it is? How do we understand how to take advantage of you know, some pretty sophisticated analytics? Uh, that for me is the, the biggest the biggest thing that's come out of this report, um, the emergence of cloud into uh, an open source into almost mainstream. I hadn't expected, I hadn't expected it to get there so quickly. So those are the two call cool outs. Great, Evan. I for me, I, I think it's the thing I still find fascinating year on year is the uh, the dynamic and changing nature of the labor market. So salaries going up again uh, still clearly indicate a tight labor market that is t uh, increasingly tight. So all of the data we see uh, globally around demand for analytics uh, professionals is pretty holding pretty consistent in our local market. What I find really interesting about, uh, to Anthony's point about the, uh, I guess, the approachable analytics sector, the fact that um, on one side, there's two interesting implications there for me. One, if you're an established professional who is specialized in business intelligence, that area of the market is becoming increasingly commoditized. Um, so you have to be aware of that and work out what you're going to do in that space. But equally, the flip side of that is it becomes a spectacular entry point for people wanting to get into a dynamic and very intellectually interesting profession. Um, largely because the tools are a more become do become more accessible, and that becomes an excellent launching point to start looking at what else can you do and how can you build more technical capabilities. So for me, it's a you know it's a fascinating it's a it's a fascinating representation of a labor market undergoing massive transformation on a year to year basis. Um, it's really really interesting. Wonderful. Um, so that's about all we have time for this morning. Um, and a huge thank you to both um, Evan and Anthony for sharing your insights uh, on those results and to, to bringing those uh, to life for us.
A couple of other thank yous because this this uh, this piece of research does take an awful lot of uh, time and effort to put together. Um, and there were some people at Melbourne Business School who really did put in some 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 real hard work to make sure that we could bring these results to life. So a thank you to Jason Tamara Wajaja, to Vas uh, Venugo Palin, uh, Jenny Liu, and to Rebecca Wilson who who made that possible. And also from the SAS side, um, they they did an awful lot of work in getting the data ready. To, so to Bart Watson and John Kershaw, um, thank you for, for making sure that that data uh, was ready for analysis. Um, thank you all to you too for uh, responding to the to the survey and to making this possible and for dialing in today to listen to, to the results of this year's um, skills and salary survey. We've got an awful lot coming up with IAPA in, in the coming year. As I mentioned, we've got education programs, we have events, we have executive level round tables uh, and many other um, activities that are planned. So I encourage you all to go and have a look at the um, IAPA website, um, which is on your screen there, and uh, you can find out everything that will be coming up in the current year. Uh, but for now, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful Christmas and New Year, and we look forward to seeing you in 2016. Thank you.